<laughs> it's kind of childish. It's a public meeting, bro. Uh, Brock, you're wrong about that. This is a private meeting. We are a club. We are not a government organization. We don't follow those guidelines. We're like a private company. And we're like having, we're like a boardroom. And people in the boardroom don't come in there and bring video equipment and record the meetings that go on in a boardroom. That's what we are. We are not county board. We are not state legislature. We are not township officials. We are a private club. Okay, these meetings are supposed to be strategy sessions. When we talk about what we want to do, for our, our organization to help our candidates. It's not to be for public consumption. It, as far as I'm concerned, as far as leadership is concerned, only recordings authorized by DTTR Road are permitted. Okay. All other video and audio recordings are not authorized. DTTR Road does not give the consent to be recorded. Anyone violating this will be subject to removal from the meeting and further the privilege to return to future meetings will be subject to review. We will forget how to enforce that. So, if you want to be a good Republican, you don't record this stuff and post it. Whereas you're posting it for Democrats to see it. And you'll keep your mouth shut because we're censored now. No new business, right, Chad? You should know your business. So, anyway, I want to make sure that you're going to be right. always. Quit being Save it, Mendrix. We just want to be able to be Speaking heard. Speaking of bullies. We can't be heard now. We're censored. You don't have my permission to record me. Nor mine. You don't have my permission to record me. Oh, no. You don't have any of our permission to be recording us. Check out what the eavesdropping statute is. Arrest me, bro. Okay, there you go. That's just how we take pleasure in that. Yeah, well, maybe you could join me. All right, let's go on. New job. Roll call, please. Hear me? I can't there we go. Can you right. hear me? Uh, Breaker 19. Hey, welcome to Behind Enemy Lines. Terry Newsom and Paul Dravick. Deep in a bunker <laughs> in Rhinosville, Downers Grove, DuPage County Township Republicans. So we're gonna have an interesting show. Uh, we had our primaries last week, and I think you know, people it's not from the neighborhood. I apologize. We're getting into a little bit of local politics and stuff here, but it's kind of interesting and it's gonna show you how bad the uh, rhino problem is yeah the, the rhinos are in illinois because we're, we're we have a super majority of the democrats we have a super minority of the republicans and then we have the gop folks that are running the state running the county running downers grove that have been around since we used to be you know, red in these areas and these are the same people that lost everything to the democrats everything We've been pummeled and pummeled and pummeled. We keep losing elections. So Paul and I have been very vocal, calling out Senator Curran, who takes money from the teachers' union, refuses to speak out against porn in his child school. We talk about Senator Curran, who takes money from the laborers' union, all these other unions, and votes for Amendment 1, the most ridiculous union overreach bill in the United States of America. And we are told to back off. So we were punished. Paul was punished. We're going to talk a little bit. And this is my buddy. I'm proud, man. Excommunicated. This, this is my war vet, man. This Ex guy's a 41-year-old war vet, right? And we we were punished. I fell on the sword, Terry. Yeah, and and um, uh, Paul was going to run for chairman position. So the rhinos, their cronies, they came out for the kill because they wanted to do the status quo. They wanted to let our politicians donate to Democrats, take money from Democrats, vote with Democrats, and worry about getting Democratic votes over their own children, like Senator Curran, right? And so I'm getting pushed back to, oh, what are you trying to do, destroy the party? No, you guys already destroyed the party. You yeah. ruined it. You ruined it. We lost everything. We lose the school boards, the library <clears throat> boards. We lose offices. And you guys keep patting each other on the back. So we're going to talk a little bit about a little adventure with these rhinos. And we're going to talk about my good buddy, Barney Fife, who came after Paul. The sheriff of DuPage County personally <clears throat> went after Paul Drabick, as well as other senior committeemen. And we were told you never go after an incumbent, right? We, were told, we, we have like a 80... 90 open uh, seats 
in Donners Grove Township. So Sheriff Mendricks, Jack Novak, Bolts, handpicked three people to run against the incumbents, including my vet buddy, got an 85-year-old man that they pulled halfway out of the grave to take over for him, and then they, they got, they got uh, uh, yard signs, flyers. Medrick's even went door-to-door -door campaigning for yeah. a 21-year-old intern against another senior person. So we're going to talk about that. I'll, one second. Let me, yeah. let me finish my rant. Yeah. So you saw uh, Jack Novak, right? All the crying started when I compared him to a dictator like Hitler. You know what this happened? After he started calling senior committeemen who wanted to put in a vote to censure Tornatory and Pachinski, I get the guy's name wrong all the time. They gave money to Kim Fox, radical Kim Fox, Deb Conroy. These people said, can we have a vote to censure? And Novak started calling them anarchists. For two years, he's been calling me a right-wing radical extremist for speaking out against the leftists that are pushing porn in our schools. Yes, I went to January 6th. I went with a police officer who just retired. I'm proud that I went to January 6th. I didn't fight. I didn't go in. I didn't do anything. Matter of fact, I was back at my hotel before I knew anyone went in. But Jack Novak is going around telling everyone. In June, I had breakfast with Novak because my Michael, my friend Michael Sheck asked me. I sat down with this Jamoke Novak. Jack asked, um, Mike asked me to try to break bread with the guy. He says, well, you're a right-wing extremist. And I, I go, you're, you're an effing rhino, <clears throat> right? So I tried. I tried for two years to get Curran to stand up against the porn. They didn't. So we started getting vocal. You saw in the video clip, right, Novak, in our last meeting, the guy who stopped our, our public speaking since August, he stopped our leadership meetings since September, he canceled our meeting this last month because they had their secret plan to get rid of Paul a week before an election. That's how these guys are. And then our last meeting where you saw Novak with his little opening speech here was talking about how they didn't like to be filmed. Well, you know what? what we filmed. We filmed ourselves speaking. We filmed Jack Novak attacking his own people, calling them anarchists, right? And he said, oh, we don't want you, like, exposing our strategy to the Democrats. Novak, you don't have a strategy. You lose. You lose at everything, right? So so don't sit there. And then more importantly, as we're going to go through this show, you're going to see, you know who hid the surveillance camera? It's Novak, Mendrix, Bolts. They were bragging about it. I got all the information. I got the videos to show it. They hid a surveillance camera back in November when they put packets on all the tables to try to embarrass my family. I got in trouble 35 years ago. I said this over and over again. Yes, I got in trouble. I got arrested. I got convicted. I got in trouble, and I, I changed my life. I'm not proud of who I was. I'm proud of who I am. And for those of you who know me, know everything I've done, where I live, I live next to a heart surgeon, for Christ's sake. I changed my life. But then you got Sheriff Mendrick, and you're going to see some information here that was published in uh, ABC and other things that in his election, 2018, he took, and again, this is allegedly, and it's all out there. It's in the ABC, and we're going to show you. He took money from a guy that was on the sex offenders registry list. The guy also allegedly was arrested for assault. Well, he was, let me finish. He was arrested for assault. He was arrested for impersonating a police officer. He was arrested for, um, um, Jesus, I lost my train. Uh, it doesn't matter. So I don't know if he gave the money. Maybe he gave the money back, and, you know, I'm glad. So we were told it was $85,000. If he didn't give that money back, the sheriff who's calling me out for 35 years ago of my record, I changed my life, is taking money from a guy that convicted all these char charges, right? He should give the money back. He should give it to a sexual assault victims or, or something. So we want to look into it. ABC is going to investigate it. I'm done ranting. I'm going to let Paul pick it up from here. But we just I just want to expose the hypocrisy of these guys. <clears throat> Well, it, you feeling all right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was, ter, ter, I, I, <clears throat> I feel like Terry's a little more pissed off than, than I am about this, but I'm proud know, he's my friend. You know, I think it's a uh it's an interesting it's an interesting story because um <laughs> so they were obviously threatened by us. And we learned a political lesson here, right? Because we were way too transparent about our uh, our strategy, about what we want to do, about you know we were we were punching in the mouth on the podcast all the time, and they took their resources and um, their political capital and clout, and they spent money and they endorsed. <laughs> uh, this is this guy, Terry's not lying. I mean, we we the public information is out there. 
uh, the guy that ran against me in my precinct, which is less than a thousand registered voters, and probably much less than that because there's duplicates at every household and there's errors and so forth. But I mean, it's like you know, it's it's like a square mile or something like that. Yeah. It's a small. You're talking like a, the the smallest level of politics is a precinct committeeman, especially when you're talking about uh, Republican or Democrat. I mean, you know, they're each neighborhood split, obviously. Um, but uh, <laughs> Jason, do you want to pull up that sheriff endorses eighty five year old that the fly? I got the flyer in there. It's what a uh, disgrace. It's it's down. It says sheriff endorses eighty five. No, not that one. Um, it's after the three pictures, but so yeah, this guy's 80. Oh, you, you go back up that one there. So, um, I, and I talked to this guy. He's, he seems like a great guy. He was with the organization for a while, but, uh, can you show the top right of that? Yeah. Sure. Can I say something real quick? Here? Yeah. So this guy's running against uh, it's Paul, cut right? Off. He's 85. There you see, there you see Barney Fife up there. Top right. Um, can you move it down? So. Somewhere? You would think the person that's running against this guy and his young family and his military outfit and stuff would want to show his picture. So uh, I, don't, I don't know why we can't see it, but they got the uh, the the sheriff, the du- the county sheriff endorsed endorsed this guy. I don't know why this is not working, but um, so so look at this real quick. So you see in there, this is what Mendrick said. We need this eighty-five year old man to help us build relationships and trust with these people over time. And we're confident he could do that. Do you know if he's going to live till next spring? He's 85 <laughs> years old, for so, crying out loud. So My just parents so, are 85. Just so everybody knows, like, the point of a precinct committeeman is to, like, notify the voters of who the candidates are, of, you know, of any ballot measures, anything a- anything related to the, the party and, you know, who who they recommend that they vote for and things of this nature. And essentially, the job is to walk the neighborhood and hand out materials on elections and things of this nature. And I mean, I went up to this guy's house when I was walking Did the neighborhood. Did you go up the wheel, wheelchair to try, ramp? The to concrete try to, wheelchair uh, ramp in there. To try to talk to him and just see what this was all about. And, you know, he didn't like the division and so forth and whatever. But he also admitted he really didn't know what the background of the uh, the dispute was between Terry and I and, and the people in the organization. But um, so they spent a bunch of money. <laughs> passing out these flyers, putting the sheriff's face on them. That was the picture that was on the flyer was not a picture of the committeeman. No, instead it was the picture of the sheriff and his DuPage County Sheriff, uh, Sheriff James Mendrick endorses Frank Worcester. Um, so I lost by four votes because they also spent money on, on yard signs and I mean, this is what they do. So this is what the Republicans in Illinois are about. The The people at the top, the Greg Boltz, who's the uh, township assessor and the county sheriff, who's been in a pretty big dispute with Terry for a while, they're, they, they feel like their positions are threatened because we're out there and we're speaking our mind about some of the things that, uh, you know, we've gone back and forth with them about. And... They weaponize their political capital, their money that they in that is in their war chest against me and two other committeemen to ensure that we weren't elected. So keep this in mind. We have open precincts in entire town, like 90% of the precincts, Republican precincts in Westmont, the town where I grew up in, next door to Downers Grove, empty. So they spent they we've lost 40 plus committeemen in the last couple of years. Right, we did lose. Uh, we lost a, a bunch of precincts because they re- redrew lines. But we have over 100 precincts. We only have 60 something committeemen. So instead of trying to strengthen our numbers and get committeemen to run in open precincts where they live, or assign committeemen to who want to be committeemen to these open precincts, they decided to spend the money on going after people in their own party. And they wonder why we call them rhinos. And and Terry mentioned before how, you know, they haven't won anything. We've we've lost uh, DuPage County to the Democrats. Downers Grove Township is uh is a town is is a township within our county, DuPage County. And 
it used to be a strong a Republican stronghold. It used to be one of the biggest uh, townships, one of the most powerful townships in terms of political capital in the state of Illinois. And since uh, since the and these people have basically driven it into the ground because now we've lost we've lost DuPage County. One of the reasons that I decided to to re-engage Terry after trying to work with the party for a long time was that I had worked with the party and asked them, go after the school boards. You know, they're putting pornography in the schools. They're, uh, they're teaching critical race theory. They're, they're teaching Marxism. They're teaching gender ideology. I mean, on this podcast, we've played recordings of a gender ideology rant by some person in a health class at Downers Grove North High School where they're talking about how kids can be sexualized at 10 years old. They can decide what their gender is. They can decide that they want to sex change things of this nature or that people can decide that they're gay at like 80. I mean, just stuff that has no bearing in, in reality. There's no science to back it up. Um, I asked them to go after you know, the left on this stuff. And w- Terry and I have been continually have been told that, you know, the, mun- you, the, the school boards, the library, th- these, these things aren't political. It's like, oh, no, they are political. The Democrats have politicized them. We have drag queen story hour getting pitched at our library. We've got a artwork in the common area where children can see that is titled MILF with a young girl watching her mother get ready um, in front of a, uh, a mirror. And, and, you know, like, so some kid's going to walk by and then go home and ask mom and dad, what, what, is, what is MILF, which is a pornographic uh, um, description. And, and then they're going to tell their parents, I saw that at the library. But every time I went to the leadership in our township organization and said, we need to, we need to call this stuff out, you know, we need to do what Terry's doing by himself. I was rebuked. Or when I gave a speech that got a standing ovation and called the Democrats Marxist, which they you, most you certainly were mean are. to me for a while. I was, I, I, I well, I just didn't talk you to didn't you. Talk to me, you weren't I mean, mean. <laughs> I mean, you can understand why. You're, yeah, no, I, you're kind of a blowhard <laughs> asshole, but but I've come to love that about you. So uh, I could, I, I called the Democrats Marxist. I was told by Jack Novak, the leader, that you know. He wouldn't have said that. Well, if he wouldn't have said that, then he doesn't understand what Marxism is, and he doesn't understand how bad the situation is in Illinois, where they're literally legislating away our constitutional rights, and that is happening. And we've covered that on this show. We've covered the the different laws that uh, have gone into effect. They, they are most certainly illegal, and they're taking away our rights. So if you don't think that the Democrats are Marxist, then you're not suited to be in the position you are, which is a representative of the Republican Party. So one of the things that is so egregious about this whole thing is they spent this political capital to put signs and in, in, to put political signs for precinct committee, men, which is so laughable in people's yards, and then pass out this flyer with the sheriff's face on it. Walking. Endorsing. Walking. Yeah. Endor- and this guy's not going to walk. He's 85 years old. I, I could tell you right now. And no, what- but Medrix was walking for a 21-year-old kid. Uh, Door knocking. Uh, yeah. Medrix, you should be chasing out those illegals that are all over Oakbrook Mall. But the most egregious thing about this is the, one of the biggest reasons I left working with the party and, and went and tried to, to work with Terry on calling this stuff out is that back in 2022 when the municipals and the library and the uh, and the school board elections were happening, they did basically nothing. Um, I worked with the leader of the organization so that he could put out a couple text messages that would direct uh, voters towards our website so that they could see who's running and and it was it was done piss poorly. Uh, other than that, we did nothing. They spent no money, but that's because they've raised no money. Um, and we had to correct this guy like 10 times because he wanted to send a paragraph and a text message like this long. I was like, Jack, listen, nobody re- nobody's reading any of that. As soon as they see how long that message is, they're just going to delete it or they're going to say stop. So we had to con- try to convince you got to do one sentence and that's all you need if you if the point is to get people to go to the website and he was indignant and and told us we didn't know what we were talking about. I mean this guy's an engineer. He's got no gift for gab. He can't speak. 
at all. He's not compelling. He's a terrible leader. And I say these things because he's the kind of leader who will censor people. And that's been going on for seven months, right? So they didn't, they didn't do anything to support the Republican candidates for school board or in the municipal elections besides a shitty little text message that did nothing because we got, we got destroyed in the 2022 municipals. Um, and that's why now the Marxist problem in, on the library board, you know, in, in the, on the village council, in the schools, is it's even worse than it was before. I mean, we're, we're seeing new stuff every day where they're trying to indoctrinate our kids. <laughs> State lawmakers are, are, create, are pe- putting forward bills that will take away parents' rights, give um, the children from 12 to 18 consent for all kinds of medical procedures so they can cut off their genitalia or get hormone blockers without the parents' knowledge. I mean, and these people, instead of fighting that kind of stuff where parents, you know, lawmakers are trying to take away kids from their parents and mutilate their bodies and give them chemicals and chemically castrate them, instead of even calling that out, even mentioning that, in a public forum, what they're going to do is they're going to spend money to go after the littlest little guy in the in the political world, the precinct committeeman, yeah. right? That's what they're going to do. That's what they're going to spend their money on. They're not going to try to protect your kids. They're not going to try to call out the Democrats for being Marxist, for taking away our constitutional rights. They are not going to stand against Amendment 1, which is the path to communism, and gave the teachers' unions basically a seat at the legislative table by giving them the ability to negotiate based on safety and economic welfare, which is why you saw the teachers, the Chicago Teachers Union not only advocate for a $50 billion increase to our taxes, which is a 100% increase, right, but also takes kids out of school during a school day to go advocate for Brandon Johnson's Bring Chicago Home increase in property taxes so so they could uh, try to fund um, yeah. fund housing for uh, teachers union members I mean that that is the, the you know that the Stasi the I mean yeah. the Politburo like folks we we've said it before we got to keep saying it communism isn't on the horizon in Illinois it is here the Democrats are communists and the Republicans don't have the political will to fight. They just want to to control. They want power and control. And all this is is about, like, these people get a pension. This is the problem. This is the problem with the money and the politics thing is, you know, Greg Boltz is the town assessor who's got a political war chest and has, worried always, about his pension. has always been a guy who's been around the orbit of uh, of of leading the the township Republican organization, and he wants to control things, and he wants the people higher up people in the party to pat him on the back and say he's do, doing a good job, and he wants another term as assessor because I think after you know two terms, I don't know something yeah. like eight years in the <clears throat> excuse me public office, they get a pension for the rest of their life, and this guy is a morbidly obese. Can you believe political he, he, he and him are the exact same age? Jesus, that scares really? me. Really? Yeah. yeah. Same age. And I can see why he wants a pension for not doing anything, because all he's good at is manipulating people, bringing them into churches to try to talk about politics, and then um, and then politicizing his family tragedies, right? Mentioning them in political meetings to get sympathy from people. I mean, yeah. this guy is an evil person. He's definitely an evil person. He's, you know... A, a pol- he politicizes everything for his gain so that he could get a measly pension. I don't even know what it is, but he's an evil guy. And and you know what, Sheriff Bendrick, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Terry's got more of a beef w- w- with him than I do, but I think like some of the things that he's done has been just egregious. Well, you guys you know? are going to see what he bragged about shortly. Yeah, we get to it. So anyway, that that's my rant. I, I just think it's, uh, and we're not done. I mean, we're we're going to come after him more now. Oh, yeah. I mean, the gloves are completely off. Um, but uh, but that that's that's what these people do. That's the definition of a rhino. They're going to spend their money going after people who want to actually fight for your kids and want to actually fight against the Marxists. They want to fight. 
They want to build, we want to build a grassroots movement, and we are building a grassroots movement. I mean, Terry Terry was just out with Ben Burkwam. Uh, he was featured on, on Bannon's War Room, and that tweet has got what? I mean... It's like almost a million. Uh, a million likes. So, so this is the huh? thing. These Republicans are doing nothing. <laughs> They're doing nothing. Terry's got a million... His tweet from Ben Burkwam, the video where they busted a... Uh, some illegals uh, and a drug deal has got over a million likes. I mean, what exactly are these Republicans doing to protect your kids and to keep Marxism out of our political institutions? Not a thing. Nothing. They're doing nothing. They're doing less than nothing. Um, and they're going after their own Working for wanting minorities. to do something. Working with minorities. You know, and the last thing I'll say is that the, I know that these people, uh, know that I have a political future because they told me so. They said, oh, we got big plans for you. You know, you're articulate. You know how to speak. And I'm not I'm not trying to sue my own horn. I just, I've, I've been public speaking for many years of my life. Um, I know, I know the history of our country. I know what my constitutional rights he are. He knows a lots of big words. I, I know a lot of big me. words. I know how to convey and articulate my position politically um efficiently and they know it and they've told me so but now that i threatened whatever power that they might have Status they decided quo. to use their political capital to take me out and i could be a weapon i could be a weapon for the republican party but uh, no you will be a weapon you these know, are dumb. not for these idiots no we I don't mean, need them we got to get rid of them first so they keep so that's my no, rant what's the next thing uh, uh jason's got his hands full what do we got next commercial 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 play so uh just to no, I, wait we're supposed to play video right yeah, yeah. we we will hold on i'm, I'm gonna right. set it up so so we, we so we want to talk about how this got to be right like terry brought it up we gave a couple we gave terry and i both gave speeches standing ovations everybody i had the mayor burridge come up to me uh, again that's the thing like you know we could be a weapon but they they want to destroy us because we challenge them um we we came out gave gave speeches got standing ovations then the leader of the organization the supposed republican started censoring us for for the last seven months and who know i mean now that they're you know going to have power again i'm sure they're just going to continue censorship that's a republican the supposed republican censoring the committeeman in his organization okay, because go, you know doesn't want it but anyway so um, so then we went back and forth with them, you know, we, we went after them. And then in the November meeting, uh, oh, yeah, let me pick it up from here. Yeah. Yeah. So I would, you know, so, so Mendrix was going around as well as some of these other clowns saying how they're going to come after me to try to discredit me. Uh, they're going to, uh, Mendrix, I have all the evidence, right? I have all of it. We can't show it here. Mendrix was telling people. Ex law enforcement, Nikki Conforti's at her little fundraiser. I think she raised like a uh, buck twelve fifty or something like that, and she was, she was bragging that he was going to come after me. Um, well, I got the, it on from a committeeman mm -hmm. who will go unnamed, but 
confirmed. Yeah, and he spoke I mean, with a lot of people. He spoke with yeah the yeah, people, yeah. and Novak and Mendrick yeah. were absolutely behind this. Yeah, so they're they're bragging about it, right? So they think that they have friends with all these people that they're not friends with. Not at all, right? And they then, told us what happened, you liars. Yeah. So Tom Renz, I was supposed to be on a show tonight, big time. Uh, War, uh, lawfare attorney on our side, right? I was supposed to be on a show at the same time. I talked to Tom right before the state police came to my house. I'm like, Tom, this Barney Fife guy from down uh, from uh, DuPage County said he's sending the state police to my house. He's an attorney. He's an he, he's an officer of the court. He knows. And uh, now Medrick's saying, oh, I had nothing to do with that. You know what happened is like he supposedly threatened him on our show, which was a lie. State police came to my house. I was also told Medrix is going to go after and try to discredit me from my 35-year-old record from when I got in trouble in my 20s. He's going to do a mailing or something. I'm like, what does that mean? No, he, he put goes, you on a list. Yeah, I don't know. He it's put like, you on a list. So all, all of a sudden. And we both had police reports written about us for a podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what he said. He's a I mean, Who needs Democrats when you got Republicans like this? So we go to our meeting in November, and that's part of what we're going to show you here, right? So we go into the meeting, and I sit down. My other friend, Paul, at the same table I sit at every single Paul time. Shut up. Right? And it was before 7 o'clock. And I sit down there, and my other friend came from Elmhurst because we knew the sheriff was going to be a guest speaker. I was uncertain what was going to happen there because he's bragging that he's going to have me arrested and all this other stuff. So there's a police report filed with the Darien police. Do a FOIA, folks. You guys know who Laura Logan is from 60 Minutes? I've been taught. I, I know Laura, right? I'm like, yeah, this goofy sheriff said he's coming after me. He sent the police to my house. You know, he's going to he's gonna expose my record. She's like, Terry, you have to go, go to your local police department, file a police report. So I went there. I sat in the parking lot. I came home. And I'm like, ah, I didn't do it. I felt uncomfortable. I'm going to file a police report against the sitting sheriff as an ex-felon, right, that he's coming after me. She's like, you, Lara Logan, if you don't know her, she's like, she's like, Terry, you get your ass up there and go with her accent. I file a police report. Do a FOIA search. Before I walked into our meeting at Downers Grove Township in November, we're worried about the sheriff. I sit down at the table, and they put this packet of information about me all over the tables, right, that the sheriff's been bragging about. So is Mendrick, so is Bolts. It's got, it's got, you know, it's, so what they, you guys are going to see this, right? Jason, you want to pull up the Terry Packet one? It's, yeah, I it's guess a couple if, below the, uh, if, if you don't mind, yeah, we'll do that let, first. Let's show that first. Then, no, then you'll, you'll see this. Because then you get the context. Yeah, exactly. It's three images. Keep going. There, right there. There. Yeah. So, you know, I've been a big target of uh, yeah, Antifa because I speak out. Antifa threatened me. I was in Epic Times you writing, go. you know, they wrote stories about it, right? So, they, they had a writer so he, for the Southern Poverty Law Center. Oh, sorry, so, on the left. So you see there that, yeah. Yeah, yeah so the, the story on the left is written by an Antifa associate in Chicago. Wrote a hit piece on me. The story on the right is from a, a website called Sedition Hunters. Sedition Hunters is ran by Antifa. They work with the feds to get people that got went to January 6th in trouble. Again, I'll say it again. And I know my leftist friends are, I was at January 6th. I was proud to be at January 6th. I was with a police officer, a real sheriff, Mendrick, a sheriff from Cook County, right? I was there with a friend that I grew up with since I was in high school. He asked me to go. We didn't hurt anybody. We, we went there to see the president speak. We also went there to protect people from being beat up They're physically there. ourselves. I could say, I bet you never did that, Mendrix. We were there to pe keep people from being beat up by Antifa and BLM. We were back at our hotel before anybody went in. Go to that last so then, one, Jason. So then they put in they put in the sedition hunters, another Antifa propaganda. Novak, Bolts, Mendrix. This is why I'm mad. They're using and, Antifa propaganda to try to discredit me. And there you go. And, and not only, so, so that packet... Yeah, yeah. Yes. The packet included sex offenders. Seven pages of mugshots of sex offenders, right? As I've if... never been accused, charged, alleged, ever, even in jokes. So they put that on the back end of their stupid packet that Lor Lor Lorraine, uh, the but... Grim Reaper Grimsley, put on all the tables, right? You know what's so egregious about this and you know what's so disgusting about these people, Terry, is like they won't. they don't have the courage to stand with us and the other parents but they're going to come after us like continually this. Continually gone to the school board meetings and the library meetings and shout out to Noel Manley who's doing yeoman's work at the library board, sticking up for our friend Bill Nieberg, the lone conservative there who's getting undergoing a Marxist show trial to be removed. Um, 
they they will not mention come to any of these meetings they will not stick up for our kids because they just want to be in a little club a political club that, while the rest of us yep. trying to save our kids from being indoctrinated and sexualized yep. and they won't do that but they got the nerve yeah to, to do put what they sex did to me. offenders but, uh, they, into a packet on Terry Newsom and suggest that what that uh, you're associated with them. And so, and so, so I sat there, right? That's so, so when I sat unbelievable. there, Paul, Mary Mack, Jeff Mack's wife came in. This was before the meeting started. I was kind of shell shocked. I don't care about me and stuff. You know, I'm, people know that are in my circle about my background and stuff, and I, I don't care about that. But here's 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 what's really egregious, and I don't know if you guys did that yet. Kids' names. They listed my mother, my fathers. They're both alive, thank God. My brother, my daughter, my wife, mm -hmm. my nephews, all their names, their ages, and their date of birth. I don't know. Do we have that in here? Uh, that one I don't think we have. So I'll get so so they listed it in this packet. Huh? I said we don't need to show it too. Yeah, well, right. Yeah, was, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, no, I, I, I redacted oh, it. Oh, you redacted it. No, yeah. I re no, yeah, no, no. But they but listed, okay. I mean, they listed a whole yeah. page of that trying to embarrass my my family. Yeah. So if you guys, when children. you're going to see, Medrix was whining like a woman, this tough sheriff, right? When when somebody came after him politically and they put out a flyer of him standing next to the guy that's on the sex offenders reg registry list, right? And between him and it the sex offender was his wife. What's her name again? Uh, Cindy, Cindy yeah. his wife Cindy, and he made a big uproar, political uproar. Oh, you dragged my wife into this. Well, your wife's kind of involved with your politics. Well, she's a committee man. Yeah, yeah, she's involved with your politics, right? My wife, my 85 year old parents, my daughter, my children, my mom, and I mean, none of them are involved in politics. But Medrix, you bragged about what you did. You bragged about it, and then you also run a campaign saying that you're help, trying to help guys in your jail and help them get better and get jobs because I disagree with you politically that you're going to try to hurt my family. And here's here's another thing. How, how, how can you look in the mirror after what you tried to do for me 35 years ago when you if, – if, if in fact what ABC reported, right, and this mailer reported, you took money – from this guy that's a sex offender who also impersonated a police officer. All these things I, I was told by other people. We got that, that they, crap, Yeah, that they allegedly, he, he got arrested for assault, all kinds of stuff. And if I don't know if you gave the money back or not. If you did, you should do a, a, a announcement, right? Yes, I gave the money back. If you didn't get, and if everything that was told in this flyer that you took approximately $85,000 from this guy, then you better give that money back. Because as a as a father, a, I don't know if you're a grandfather. I don't know nothing about you. I, you're, you know, as a father, grandfather, Republican, as a man, if you took money as a sheriff and a law enforcement person from someone that impersonated a police officer, someone that's a sex offender's list, drugs, assault, you better give that money not back to that guy. You ought to give it back to like somebody a sex assault victims or donate. I don't know. I, maybe you gave it back, and if you do, I applaud you. <clears throat> maybe don't use it uh, to go after committeemen in your own organization, though. I would just uh, recommend so, that's probably a bad idea. Sorry for the word. So, Jason, you want to show that? If you spit the gum out of here. Oh, oh sorry, I'm chewing. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm chewing. Yeah, I'm so worked up about this stuff with Paul. <laughs> I'm more mad than Paul's mad. Well, this guy I mean, wants to fight for our country, and he's got a one-year-old, three-year-old, beautiful wife and kids, and he's doing all this stuff. And Mendrix, Bolts, and Novak get an 85-year-old man that can't even walk down the front steps of his house to run against him. Well, I mean, I'm 41, and I've got you know, I've got a long future ahead of me. People actually want to hear what I have to say. These guys are dinosaurs, and they'll be gone soon. So, so, so after <sighs> all this stuff, you guys remember the opening video, right? So I'm, gl I'm glad Paul said to go in this order so you have context, right? You saw Novak in the beginning sing with his little earplugs. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> well, who this wants is a private, this private, is a club. private club. And here, I want to mention something. the quiet part right? out loud. We're going to silence yeah, you yeah, and not let you talk because this is a film. private club. So listen, Bob Berlin, I don't know if you watch this. I want everybody that watches this, including Bolts and Mendrix and all your friends, reach out to Bob I, Berlin. I hear Bolts is a big fan of us. Yeah, reach out reach out to Evil Bob bastard. Berlin. Ask Bob Berlin if the videos that we took of ourselves and, and Jack kind of chastising us, if there's anything wrong with it, ask him if it's a private club. 
Ask him if they, we couldn't film in there in the first place, right? And we never, there's there's no winning strategies that we give to the Democrats. We show them what clowns you are, what embarrassing fools you are, but there's nothing to share. Well, and when we you actually, what? You guys keep losing. Sorry. So, so, we actually fight them. They yeah. don't fight them. <laughs> yeah, you guys, yeah, you guys don't do we anything. Said, Terry, well, you and I sat in the front row of a Sean Caston and Ann Stava Murray book ban event, and we went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them and argued with them on the merits of how the book ban bill is BS illegal and that kids are committing suicide so, so because remember of not what, being yeah, transgender. Remember what, uh, what None Novak, of them have done that. None of them. Remember what Novak said a month ago in the video that we just opened, right? We have no right to film. Oh, I don't want to be filmed. I don't. If you notice in that video, Medrix was filming me. Did I give him a permission? Did you give him permission? No, no, Did no. you say that? No. No, no, no. no. I didn't. So, I mean, Medrix, the sheriff, so, right? I, what's this eavesdropping law? I think I mean, when he pulled his camera out of his pocket, he dropped his bullet on the floor, too. Instead so, of, like, having somebody... <laughs> Videotape us with like a cell phone, like this. They busted and he up. had to turn his light on. <laughs> Camera like, like, Oh, it's like, Cam oh, no, he's got me. So I want you guys to listen. So you heard, you heard Novak say, You're not allowed to film. You can't do this, right? You're not allowed to. It's a private club. You guys are going to see the video right now. There's a video and then there's a still photo. So when we sat down, hold on a second. When we sat down, one of the other committee men said, Terry, they're filming us right now with a surveillance camera. And it was hidden. It was aimed exactly where I sit every single time. So get this. You're going to see that. Then you're going to see a still photo of it. Right? At the last meeting, I went up to, um, what's her name? Larissa. Right? I had that photo. So, Larissa, tell me I'm not lying on this. you got to tell the truth, right? I go, Larissa, I heard Jack's comments about we're not allowed to be filming, right? It's a private club. You need permission. Then you heard Barney Fife say that it's like the electronic surveillance violation. I go, Larissa, remember when you were at the November meeting where Jack Novak wasn't there? When you put all those packets on my background there to try to, to embarrass me? And then you guys hid the surveillance camera thinking when I saw that packet, I was going to blow a gasket. And then you were going to use the hidden surveillance camera video to arrest me for something that I did wrong when I saw my mother and father and daughter's names on the packet, right? So Larissa goes, oh, 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 that wasn't mine. That was Jack Novak's. Jack couldn't be there that day. I go, oh, give me a break. I go, you just heard Novak say we're not allowed to film. It's a private club. We're not allowed to film. And then we had to get permission. You heard Jack say you don't have my permission. You heard Medrick say my, you didn't have my permission. You guys hid, and that was a surveillance camera. Oh, 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 we just did audio. No, it's a camcorder. You had the thing open. There's no such thing. It's as a, right there's no you. audio. It was aimed on me, right? So that's what that's what's really you, you, for those of you who are on the fence about us. You got to look back at what these guys did to us, right? We're not kind of like wallflowers that are going to let these bullies. You heard Medrick say, "Oh, there's the bullies." No. These guys are the bullies. bullies. We bullied back on the bullies. He's a to sheriff. Us. The other guy was the chairman of the organization, and w us that are challenging him. Or the, that that's not how bullying works. The people with the power aren't the ones that do get bullied. So they're the ones that do the bullying. Yeah, show this video right now, so so we can, you guys can see this. This is you know, thank God one of my buddies saw, it, but I, I didn't do anything wrong, so I wasn't worried about getting. There's a movie camera. Pointed right on me there. Yep. <laughs> Staring right. It just at happened. You. They never filmed ever. I called the guy. I told you. Yeah. Yep. It's right on me. Straight on you. <laughs> That's Mike in the background. Yeah. And here's all the people in here. There's Barney Fife in the back. See people walking away because they didn't want to be on the camera that was being filmed. Go to the still just so people can see that just in case they didn't get a good shot of it. <clears throat> so Tom Renz, I know I'm supposed to be on your show now. Tom Renz, lawfare attorney. We're talking to him and some others that might put the sheriff, DGTRO, in hey. national limelight soon. You guys want to go to war? You got Tom Renz. Take hey, Tom. Love you, baby. Oh, yeah. So I mean, is. now it's time to bring yeah. these yeah. guys into the national oh, fold. Oh, that's, oh. that's... So there, there. See that? That's just in case you didn't see it in the video. Aimed right at me. So, so Larissa, oh, oh, well, well Jack, he couldn't be there. So, uh, it wasn't video. It was just audio. No, it wasn't. It was, you got to flip that thing open. And you guys know how a camcorder works. All of us know, right? And there's no such thing as an audio. And they, they purposely aimed it on me. Oh, I don't think it was aimed on you. I go, come on, Larissa.
You guys aimed it right on me. So they they claimed uh, <clears throat> they claimed ignorance about the packet that smeared Terry and you know put his family's name in there with the addresses and tried to associate him with sex offenders. And uh, they said they had no knowledge of it and they they, they didn't know who came in and passed out this packet, uh, you know, before the meeting started. And um, Lorraine, I think, what is she, the treasurer? I think she's the treasurer. And uh, Larissa, who's the the vice chair, said that they didn't know anything, that uh, they came in and the packets were already on the table. But uh, (laughs) we got them thanks to Chick, who is no longer a committeeman either because she... You know, they weaponized uh, their war, political war chest against her as well. She videotaped a meeting where the sheriff uh, took control of it and, and started uh, intimidating Chick while she was videotaping. But let's play that uh, it's factual video, uh, Jason, so we could see, uh, see her lie in real time with the, um, with the tables showing that the packets weren't there by the time that they got there. Larissa and I were the first to arrive. That would be on tape. And apparently, people have a copy of the tape because they put pictures out there. They pointed at me. Oh. Give them to you. Yes, but give them to me. The people that have the tape can view it. They can see when Larissa and I arrived, that document was on the table. We got busy. Liar. So how can you prove that those documents were not on, that were on I the table the when table you arrived? I the table by the door. You probably could see what was on at least that first table. Oh, you can. So you're saying that the documents yeah. were on the oh, table oh, at 6 o'clock. Oh, no liar. document. Lorraine the, the Grim Reaper Grimsley. Oh, okay, so who was there before you? We got there five. Good uh, right behind her. Five forty. But who was already there? Was the last one. Our meeting starts at seven. seven. No one out. No one else was there. Well, it's factual. I so I mean. I- it's factual. The packet was yeah. fa- so the packet was factual, and they got there at five forty-eight, and uh, it was already on the tables. Six oh five. We see yeah, that so she's. So this is an hour before. Lorraine Grimsby can, uh, is a liar. Can you guys liar. hear me or no? Liar. Yeah, yeah, this is an hour before our meeting, right? Liar. And so what happened is like she, here's what these clowns the did, right? So Mendrix and Bolts and all those guys. So Ashiani's was sold, right? To the, and we host our meetings there. So I want to do a shout out to Jay and Deepak. My Indian buddies from Schomburg who know the new owners, Jack. They know the owners, right? They own restaurants and stuff. It's a very tight circle. So I went oh, yeah, back in there and I showed them the packets of what they did to my family. These guys were upset. Even though the DGTRO goes there on a monthly basis, they gave me access to those cameras. And then later, Mendricks, we're going to show that video, right? Mendricks was saying that, oh, they like we had no access. We didn't have the opportunity to get access to this this private company's surveillance cameras that we broke the law. He tried to insinuate. Then he later said that, oh, we, their lives are at risk because myself and another individual, a senior, senior, senior DGTRO person who was offended, saw the same stuff I saw. We can right? play that video. You want to play the first few minutes of the Mendrick? So this is going to sh- the Mendrick DGTRO. Yeah, please. Because this is going to show, like, it's just the collusion between you know, a chairman, the chairman of a political organization and a sheriff. I thought, I thought it was very unprofessional the way that he handled this. And how and he that, treats women, by and, the way. Watch. And how, yeah, the way that he talked to uh, Chick Briner, who's um, a very committed committee. That he uh, campaigned area, against. Area chair. That so, he campaigned against. So this is the beginning of a video where uh, the sheriff took over control of the, of the meeting when the uh, vice chair, Larissa, should have, um, and, and started skulked around trying to intimidate everybody. Um, Are we recording this? Yes. Um, Somebody record her. (laughs) Wait, I thought we're not supposed to record. Can you stand up? Wait, he told his wife to break the law, surveillance law. Let's be fair about this. Sure. Let's be fair about this. No problem. How did this guy get elected? My presence was requested uh, by the chairman to give an information report on an assignment. He asked me to represent him on my good side? Sure. You don't have a good side, Bedrick. Right. Sure. Sure. No, it's frozen. Um, so anyway, he asked me to represent. This is a Q&A, and this is anything that's going to be voted on. So 
Let's put it this way. Photographs of an elected we're official okay. from our township were being sent to people via smartphone text message technologies that appear to be generated from the security system belonging to Ashiana Banquets, located at 75th Lamont. Uh, Chick, you're aware this is where we have our meetings, right? Our DuPage County Republican Township meetings? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, so these photos show the arrival time of one particular elected official and several photos copied from Ashiana security systems were garnered and distributed without township or personal permission by the person who's being videotaped. Chairman Novak said that he briefly spoken to Ashiana management about who and why our event videos or pictures were given out. Then he asked me to speak to management on his behalf since Did he had Did you go as the sheriff, Mendrix? I spoke to Ashiana manager, owner, and asked him if he disseminated videos or pictures from our recent meeting to any third parties, and he made many apologies, but did in fact affirm that he distributed video and or photograph material of our members arriving for our last monthly meeting to a third party. Got it, Chick? Chick, you got it? I got it. That was me, buddy. Great, thank you. So this meeting was one of our township members and they said that the reason they provided the photos to somebody was that they had a close relationship to a member of our township organization. They also stated that would never happen again, that they've trained all their security staff to only furnish security video to law enforcement authorities for investigation of crimes from now on. I mean, I couldn't even ask them for that video. I wasn't working as a police officer. I was assigned by Jack to go ask questions about Ashiana. So, the meeting then concluded. Jack Novak told me that when he spoke to Ashiana management, they also affirmed, apologized, and claimed staff were not trained to, or were trained to not repeat this behavior, but then told Chairman Novak that the videos and or photos of our event were given to a different one of our township members. So therefore, without a firm, further for, formal investigation, which I can't be part of because what I recommend is the agreed parties make a police report report with the Downers Grove Police Department, then videos can be captured by the proper methodologies, proper statements, proper interviews could be made. That's the path that you should take if you feel aggrieved for this. So it cannot be definitively determined which of these two of our members it actually was who obtained our township <laughs> videos and or photos. I'll clean it up, it was me. You know, yeah. and, well, and allowed we them to be distri distributed and disseminated via smartphone text messaging technology. But it has been established smartphone and text affirmed messaging technology. that the Downers Grove Township Republican Organization images were indeed given out to third parties, time stamping the arrival times of at least one elected official. Right, Chick? Yeah, that was Bolts right. waddling in with his cane. So, Ashiana pledged it would never happen again, and that staff have now been properly trained to never repeat this behavior. I was tasked with this due to some members having understandable security con concerns with attending any future events at this location prior to making a commitment with them for the December 11th Christmas party. So, I would also like to raise that I have some of those same safety concerns myself at that location. I wouldn't feel comfortable going back there with those same security concerns. Jump, jump in on I mean, they're, they're time stamping elected officials. Their monthly meetings are regular meetings. So at, somebody could ambush you if somebody has a grudge with you. I mean, if whoever took the video and the photos, why would you want the time stamp? What because are you talking about? What are you talking about? Security uh, oh, that's that good. That's good. After but, viewing the photos wait, wait, wait. that were being disseminated on text messages, they're all out in the lobby. None are even in the affected area. And the verbiage that accompanied these yeah, uh, we're that's good, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, we're good. Was, get, get this clown off the camera. The, the, it, the lobby so, is how to get so, to so the wait, banquet wait, wait. hall. So here, here's, why, here's why we wanted the timestamp videos, right? So it's you not saw even that you wanted them. They were security cameras. It was 6 o'clock. Our meeting started at 7. So we got the pictures of Bolts waddling in with his bag full of the 18 uh, packets, big packets, right? So, yes, the owners were upset when they saw what they did to me and my family. They said, yes, we own the surveillance video. No, you, you're, it's not a security risk for us to show you who the people are that breach it's your security. It's private they doxed my, Me and my family, right? They dox my family. So Medrix, for someone who said he has nothing to do with it, and I, I, I got evidence, he lies. He's lying, you guys. I got evidence. I got proof. I've got an attorney, right? 
So he's lying. He's lying. And for somebody who supposedly knows nothing about this, why is he going through so much time about Why is he concerned about a security a timestamp showing them going in an hour before? And then you heard uh, Lorraine the Grim Reaper uh, Grimsley say, oh, yeah, the, 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 they just magically were there before I got there that, an hour ahead of time. These people hate me. So here's another one for Larissa. What? Wait, here... What is that? What is open this? Meetings act. Oh, uh, the Open Meetings Act. Yeah. So here's another one for Larissa. Larissa, do you remember that senior, senior, senior person came up to you and wanted to know who did this to me? And what did you say to that person, Larissa? And you could ask them, and I'm sure you know who they are. Oh, well, there were some other strangers in here. Larissa, you got there at 545. I got that time stamped as well, right? There was two unknown people supposedly walking around there. And, okay, then this person said to you, well, why would you leave that big document on every table? Because they hate me. They hate Paul. When you see something that mentions my name or his name that's on a table, they control our speech. They control our – they don't want us to talk, right? And if think about it. If you walk in an hour before a meeting and you see Terry Newsom in a big packet on each table, you would open it up and look at it. You know what Larissa said to this guy? Oh, well, we – we thought it was his resume. I got a 35-page resume, right? That's another emission mm. of guilt. It's another emission of guilt. So why am I so angry? These people all colluded because we had differing opinions, and I fought back after they attacked me. They attacked other people. That's why I'm mad. And so we could maybe overlook some of this stuff if they were good at their jobs. They keep losing and losing. People are committeemen are knocking on doors, trying to raise money, trying to get candidates. Most of our candidates suck because they don't want to spend time running because they know they're going to lose. So they they won't fight for the they won't fight for the kids. They'll let the kids be sexualized by the Democrats and and uh, and the Marxists in in the schools and the libraries. But then they'll put they'll they'll expose Terry's family's names and their address, including his children. And then they'll also put sex offenders in that packet to try to associate him him with sex offenders when he's the guy trying to fight for the kids. Right and trying to fight against kids being sexualized in our institutions, and then Terry goes to the establishment to try to understand who did this to him, which there's nothing illegal about that. Got pictures from the security cameras, got footage from the security cameras to show that all these idiots are guilty of colluding to sabotage Terry and try to uh, expose his family's information, and then this clown of a sheriff gets up politicizes the whole thing tries to intimidate us and other the people email. other people in the room by tr trying to suggest that what terry and what i did was illegal which it was not this is a private establishment they own their security footage by the way the lobby area or that he was talking about it wasn't even of the room yeah that's how everybody gets in you big moron ask bob berlin that's you think the we're entrance so the whoever's truth. shown in the entrance area is obviously included in who would have passed out the packets and we have that information so, as well so we have questions so this guy was just trying to intimidate people suggest like that you know, we did something wrong, which we didn't, and neither did the people who own the establishment. And subsequently, he intimidated them by going to them as a sheriff. They know he's a sheriff. The chairman went to them. They both intimidated this organization, and now we are kicked out of that place. Um, and they they had to go to a smaller place because they can't even fill yeah, they half got, of, they got the, kicked out. of the place. So we got some questions. we got to start reading questions here for people who oh, are taking nice. time. This is on Rumble. Ginger Peachy. Hey, Ginger Peachy. It's a public meeting and a public officials, and it's an Open Meetings Act violation to disallow recording as well as addressing public officials, public comment. Anyone filed an OMA complaint with... AG. So first of all, Novak I don't know said, if it is a public. Yeah, I, yeah, that's what Jack Nova said. But it doesn't matter. Ask Bob Berlin. All right. Ask Bob. So all my enemies that are watching, Bob Berlin called somebody. I'm not going to call out their name. Bob
Bob Berlin knows who it is. Bob Berlin said none of what we did was wrong. He did say one thing. If you actively, purposely try to hide a camera, Bob Berlin's a state, you state try to hide a way. camera, that could be in question, but not necessarily oh, a like violation. Oh, kind of what they did to you. Yeah, yeah. So ask Bob Berlin. He, Bob doesn't like me. He hates state's me. Attorney He's friends Bob with Berlin. these guys. So ask him. I just got this last week. Someone told me. Here's another one from Will Jones. I hear there was several hundred, if not thousands, of fake ballots discovered this week. I'm oh. sure there was three... There was four extra ones over him. <laughs> I found that interesting. Uh, I found know. that interesting. Um, we got another one from G.I. Jane. Uh, it's sad that they spent time and money on pursuing committeemen race when I bet you they didn't give one penny to any candidates that were running in the primary. They don't even help school board parents fight. They don't help school board. These guys, board. Are, these guys are just clowns. They didn't help. Yeah, they didn't help anybody in the municipals. Bolts is telling people we shouldn't get into the school boards and all this stuff. No, you need to help our children. You guys are Republicans. Well, your parents, grandparents. We need help fight for our what, kids. Democrats uh, own all the school boards. One of the things that happened during the minutes. So, just a little bit background on the to to, to answer that question a little bit of a background on the 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 greg bolts who's the township assessor and who has a big political war chest lots of donations um has made a lot of fundraising connections over the years there was he he was basically deposed a few years ago when the new chairman took over nobody want nobody in the entire organization wanted greg involved because he manipulates and tries to intimidate people and, you know, and and politicizes his family tra tragedies and politicizes the church and his religion and yeah. all of this stuff. Everybody wanted him out, including the Jack. now chairman. So they did. They basically formed a coalition to get rid of the guy. Well, Greg, who who has access to all the funds and who is the main fundraiser, was basically excommunicated there for, for a little while. And so he took his fundraising, he pouted and took all his money with him and didn't help anybody out. So um, when Terry and I started going after him, the, the chairman brought him back in the fall because he's an incompetent leader and censors people and doesn't call out Republicans who donate to uh, to Kim Fox or Soros uh, elected uh, state's attorneys. And so he needed help, so he brought Greg back in. And what does Greg do? Greg immediately takes his war chest and weaponizes it against other Republicans. By yard signs and so, stuff. So, that, so that's what he did. That's so the kind of guy. Got, yeah, that's the kind of guy Greg Boltz is. Greg Boltz is going to take his money and pout when the people don't want him around. And then he's not going to actually help our kids stop being sexualized in schools by helping Republican candidates for school board races. He's not going to help there. Because people don't like him anymore, but he is going to help when he feels that his power is threatened. Yeah. I mean, this is the kind of right, rhino, so let's, we rhino got, BS. We got questions here. Uh, time and money. Let's see. How many other candidates does Sheriff Medrick make a flyer for and walk for them? I bet you none. What a piece of shit, Sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so here's another one. Uh, Ginger, the DPC state's attorney and the sheriff are really good friends. That's true. There's another one from yeah. Joey Batters, Southsider. I hope the attorney gives them national Joey attention. Batters. This is ludicrous. Thank you, brother. So uh, here's a couple other things that's going on. This so I have so we didn't have time to put all this stuff together. But the sheriff is sending text messages saying that. <laughs> Telling people go follow your drug dealer friend. For me, from thirty five, I, I was. I'm sorry, your your drug addict friend. The drug addict. I yeah. was never a drug addict, right? I had a problem selling. I'm not doing drugs. It was wrong. It was not any better. I, again, I'm not proud of who I was. I'm proud of what I am. You sheriff. don't test the merchandise. <laughs> well, I have a few drinks once in a while. <laughs> so I was never a yeah, drug so, addict. Well, I hear he does too. Yeah, he, he all. Uh, yeah. Sheriff's got that problem. Yeah. But so he he also said to some of these people, I think Terry. So you see how active and hyper I've always been hyper. He said, I think that Newsom is still on cocaine, and I got to lock him up in my jail and put him through a rehab program. More bull crap that this guy's trying to do. And then um, Gregory Bolts is saying that he's worried about his safety and security of him and Melissa. That I'm like a uh, you know a loose cannon. Yeah, so I was. I'm not. So you're first of all, you're not worth it for me to get in trouble. I would never do anything to compromise my family, my safety, my security, my freedom. Right? I got this. 
This is more important. You should worry a little bit more, more about his health, Bolts, don't you think? You're going to have a heart attack before, <laughs> you know, you're gonna, your cane's going to break as you go down the stairs. You're going to break your neck. Something's going to happen. I don't need to do anything. I wouldn't do anything to you. Yeah, He told yeah, me something like he was some sort of judo champion. I'm surprised he's, he's afraid oh for his God. safety. I, th- I think he could get, you know, they yeah. give you the old judo hip toss. Yeah, yeah, we're, we are the same on, age, Greg. buddy. You look so athletic. And, and I've been through two cancer treatments. I mean, two I, stage three melanoma, stage four prostate cancer. Here's another thing they talk about. Jack Novak, I, I wish him the best with his health. He's battling cancer as well. Yep. But when I'm battling a reoccurrence, wish him the it's best. my third time. I has a reoccurrence stage four prostate cancer. He's going around slamming me to him and all these other guys. Radical right wing extremists because I defend my kids and I went to January 6th. He called Scott Melrose an anarchist because yeah. he wanted to. So I'm. Sorry, I'm I, yeah. I'm very so. Let's go to the next videos. I'm very. What else we got? We got. Uh, do we do we have anything else we want to? Oh, we got that ABC video. Oh, oh, here you go. Do that one. There you go. I see that. <laughs> All right. Oh, this is like is AI awesome or what? You gotta love AI. Listen to this one. AI. <laughs> Can't hear it. Can't hear it. Oh, that was a big shot. Oh. I'm a I started uh, over, bro. Snag. Oh, that was... <laughs> I'm a snag. I'm a sweater. I started over, bro. All right. I'm a snag. Yeah, it looks like it played. I'm but... a sweater. Snag. Nick, it's snag. I started over, bro. Wow. All right. Oh, you could tell yeah, how loose like he is. He did I'm do judo, snag. right? Nick, it's snag. All right. Uh, so let's see. What's the next one? Do we have that ABC video? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jason's guy. Yeah, Jason made that thing. So again, so as we're getting ready for this, you know, before you do it, Jason, get it as you're getting ready. So this is from ABC. This has nothing to do with us. These are. Al- that we should be running. I think uh, that we should be running. Uh, that we should be. Uh, that we should be running a clean race for uh, sheriff's uh, candidate. All right. Um, so this is ABC. This has nothing to do with us, right? We we didn't do this we didn't allege this this came from a story on abc and if you'll notice there's been some allegations from the guy running against him and we don't know if um all these things are true or not all we know is that we've been told they're true we've been told that he took close to eighty five thousand dollars from a guy that was on the sex offenders hot um sex offenders list and the same individual that i was told Again, allegedly, and we got to investigate. Actually, the hey, Mendrix, the reporter is going to be reaching out to you to get an update on the story. <laughs> so anyway, um, this guy supposedly got in trouble for impersonating a police officer, assault, and drug charges. This is the you know this is the sheriff, and if this is true, I'm not saying it's true. I'm saying we told it was true. We were told it was true, and ABC is put it on. You know, hopefully, you gave that money back if all this stuff is true. If it's not, then please tell us. Why would you keep money from somebody like that when you're trying to attack me for a stupid meme from 35 years ago? Go ahead, roll up, baby. I think that we should be running a clean race for sheriff's candidates. Meantime, Bibiano accuses Mendrick of taking campaign contributions from vendors hired by the county and taking money from a registered sex offender. We do have a large amount of donors. Uh, I don't know the background of every single one of them, but that's Liar. news to me. A donation Mendrick is not getting is from John Zaruba. The sheriff switched his support for Mendrick to Bibiano. Wow, On top isn't of it, it, Mendrick says isn't it he incredible? gave Bibiano several promotions, yeah. which made Bibiano Mendrick's boss. Wow, that was incredible. Then then show the still the mailing that went out, uh, Jason. There was a mailing. Again, this is yeah. not from us. We had nothing to do with it. This is from before. And um it's uh Oh, 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 there it is. There it is. All right. There we go. So it's pedophile, right? Yeah. It's, so, so again, uh, it's all right. Look at this has nothing to do with us, <laughs> right? There's the guy. So this ties into Greg Hart. I, I don't give a crap about Greg Hart. He's nothing. But if you look at the bottom, David Litz, uh, Blue Star Security Blue Star Services, Technology, Nationwide Security the, Services, the Sex cyber. Offender. Yep. Uh, the metric says we have a large amount of donors. Um, um, I don't know the background of every single one of them, but that's news to me. So hopefully you did your, your homework, right? Metric, since this came out, if this stuff is true, if what ABC said is true, if whoever put this together said it's true about this David Litt character, the fact that it says up there, 
did you give that money back? And if you didn't, would you please give that, like, roughly, no, he, it says $85,000. He spent, $85, he spent give, it on the 85-year-old yeah, running for precinct committee. Yeah, <laughs> if, if you didn't, please donate it to, you know, because I know you're running again. You're going to have an event on May 2nd. I think the newspaper, uh, there's going to be some reporters there want to update on your, if you're going to run again, right? So anyway, if, if you didn't give that $85,000 back to, and hopefully you didn't give it to a sex offender so he could use it to maybe, you know, do bad things, hopefully you can give it back to, like, kids that were victims of sexual assault. Um, I, I, I don't know. It's just really weird. Oh, then notice they had his wife, uh, Cindy's picture. We, we had it crossed out of there out of respect, right? Because, you know, unlike Mendrix, uh, I'm not going to expose his wife's picture and try to inv and embarrass his wife because he supposedly took money from a sex offender while they put my, my mom and dad's and my wife's and my daughter's, my children's, my cousin's, names. my nephew's names, date of birth and ages in there. I'm not like him. So let's go to the next one. Let's go to the one um, oh, that shows the uh, the visitors I had. The visitors, Paul. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The uh, the two pictures that the, the cops at the door. Down, 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 down. And it's right below the... Uh, Oh, you were lower. There you go. There you go. Lower. Um, but we should set it up there. There, it there is right, right there. there. So, so one of the things that had happened, Terry, was that uh, Mendrick threatened me about the 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 meme on the computer, right? And then you kept talking. You kept talking about him on the podcast. What did I say to him? And. It was what the public. Yeah, what yeah. What I tell the metrics, you can. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, and it goes again. Now I'm just not going to say it, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so we went. You know, he threatened me about you know using my home computer to search certain things, which which is a little strange. And then uh, you started talking about him even more, and <laughs> said a couple things. And next thing you know. Uh, you got a uh, couple couple visitors on. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, show those pictures. Um, so I want you guys to keep in mind, right? Because he's lying. He said he had nothing to do with this. Absolutely, one thousand percent lying, you guys. Um. So I was told. There you see the badge. Uh, two the days before this, there. right? Before this, I got, I got all this on the ring camera, right? So I was told Mendrix was going to put me on some kind of list, and he was going to send the police to my house. The state police. Remember, he's the sheriff. He was going to send the state police, and then he was going to go after my background and expose me to try to discredit me and embarrass me, right? So those things all happened. I was told before they happened, state we're going to happen. State police. Yeah. For yeah, political speech. Yeah. So so I was told they're going to happen. So I'm going to go back and reference Tom Renz. This happened on a Tuesday. On a Sunday, attorney Tom Renz, national claimed attorney. I told him about this. He's going to have me on a show, and he's looking into what Mendricks did, weaponizing law enforcement because we had a, a political disagreement. I made a me me meme. Can you please leave that up there? I want the people to see that. Yeah, I want them to see that, right? And and so I, I get um, – um, so I was warned, and so my ring camera goes off. I go out there, and there's two, two officers on me. I walk out. I said, are you guys the state police? And they said they look kind of – they were super nice guys, right? They looked a little surprised, and I said, well, yeah, you know, I was I was told, Mendricks telling people that he was going to send the police to my house and put me on some kind of watch list. He goes, do you know why we're here? And I said, no, I, I, I don't. I go, I was told that I supposedly made a threat or something about uh, Senator Curran on my podcast, but I never threatened anybody ever on my podcast. And he goes, here, let me show you. And I got other pictures later. They're they don't have them. Um, it's all on the video camera. He goes, let me show you what we received. And it in, in my podcast, I said, I keep, you know, calling out current for not speaking up and defending me and our kids, me being attacked as a father for the porn in our kids' school. His daughter and my daughter are on the same volleyball team. And then the, the officer opened up his folder, showed it to me, and there was an email, an anonymous email. Listen to me, guys, anonymous email, right? So remember, Medrix was bragging. And it said, oh, yeah. Uh, Senator Kern, I'm going to pummel you on my little podcast, blah, 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 right? I meant pummel him on my podcast like I'm pummeling Mendrix now. I don't mean I'm going to pummel him physically, right? I say I'm going to pummel him. M keep in mind, 
current six foot eight, two hundred eight pounds, played football at University of Illinois, and he's like fifteen years younger. I mean, I got cancer. I'm like cancer ridden old man. I could barely. But this is what <laughs> they do, though, Terry. It's they're weaponizing law enforcement against people for using political speech. This yeah, is so the, the so, so like state the, of the world. You let you go. This, so the cops said to me that I said I didn't mean physically pummel. He goes, "That's what we thought we meant." I go, oh my God, why don't you guys well, what go after criminals? You? I go, what did yeah, they he say goes, to you? He goes, he goes, we got an anonymous email. He goes, the higher ups sent us. Right. Quote, the higher ups sent us. And I think you got that I, on tape. Yeah, right? I said, yeah. why don't you guys go after the legals? He goes, hey, I wish we could pick what we go after. You have a good Nate day, Mr. Newsom. That's all we needed to hear. All right, so I'm telling you the truth. Dollars. Anybody wants to see it, I'll show it to you. Uh, Tom Renz is looking into this. He's got. A, he's talking to somebody from Illinois. I don't know what we're going to do with it, but I'm not lying to you. I was a supporter of Mendrix until he we did got this. All the, we have all the receipts on this stuff. You know, We have all the receipts. We have videotapes. We have pictures. Uh, you know, we, got, we got them on tape saying these things. I mean, we oh, got one, them on one tape threatening me, saying that uh, I'm on about, a police report. One thing about my wife, sorry. Yeah. My, 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 so after this happened, right, my wife was a nervous wreck. First, she started yelling at me because, for those of you who know, I had some other issues. I was on the domestic terrorist watch list, TSA, all because of the stuff I did. I'm off of that. Congressman Matt Gates and Congressman Troy Neal's. Stuck up for me. I'm off of it. I didn't do anything oh, wrong, yeah. right? They weaponized. The Democrats weaponized law enforcement. Sheriff Medrick bragged and weaponized the state police. There they are again. Bragged about it. He bragged about it to all these people, and all of a sudden they show up on my front door. My wife was so upset. She started, after these guys left, she started yelling at me, what's going on? I'm enough of this, because she doesn't want me fighting for the kids. And then she broke down and started crying. She's like, I don't know what to do. What if these guys arrest you? I don't know who to call. I don't know anything about this. You know, and I hugged her, and I felt bad. And that's why I'm pissed off. This piece of crap weaponized, scared my wife, but, listed my family in there, and he's our sheriff. And by the way, you, there's Terry uh, spoke to somebody that weekend, <clears throat> and before this happened, just so... Just so everybody knows that this isn't just conjecture, he wrote an email to us that we have that and we're in which he detailed out all the the threats that were made behind the scenes. And he told us that if I get arrested, make sure that you, you know you have this document that shows that, you know, he detailed it all out. So he's not lying about the fact that the police report we too. went after we went after Mendrick on a podcast. The, the DuPage County Sheriff on We didn't a go after him. We didn't go after him, Paul. Be careful. They're going to be at your <laughs> yeah, house. Yeah, right. We, 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 ex <laughs> we exposed the corruption and the rot that is in the uh, local Republican organization that, that leaks into the DuPage County Sheriff's Office. And then Terry was speaking to someone, and he was, t he was threatened through proxy. He, Terry was threatened through proxy that if he doesn't knock it off, he's going to be put on a list you know, by the by the county, and the cops are going to come to his house and arrest him. And so he wrote us an email that weekend and said they're going to come after me. They're going to arrest me. Here, here's all the information that I was told. I'm giving it to you so that you know that I was threatened via I proxy. About that. Yeah, that's good. And then, sure, sure thing. Tuesday morning was it Tuesday? Something like that. It was He's got Monday the or Tuesday. Video. It, so he, he's got the original video. Oh, yeah, So this yeah, is yeah. the one where Medrix was telling people, oh, we got him. We got him. Oh, yeah, he threatened the Senate. I didn't threaten the Senate, you guys. I wouldn't threaten anybody. I'll goof around and stuff, but we never, you know, so go ahead, show it, Jason. Everybody from the DGTRO that you called anarchist. You need to apologize to me. You need to reverse not, the censorship. I'm going to pummel you. I'm going to pummel Kern. I don't know. This is a little show. It's new. But you know what? You guys don't represent our values. You don't support us. And by the way, in my precinct, I kicked ass for the Republicans. I, You know what? Not because I'm a sophisticated new <laughs> precinct captain. I went and talked to everybody and told them about what's going on in our schools and everything. I, I bet you any one of you, including you, Bolts, <laughs> compare what happened in my precinct to your precinct. And if we would have done as well as I did, the state would be red. Thank so, you. I mean, you could tell there, like, so that's what they sent the cops to his house for. Yeah, threaten a senator. Good one, Jason. So, I, I mean, I think we went on. We, we, I, oh, I got one. I got another comment here. Let's see. Uh, 
somebody said uh, Schmidt something said, yeah, audit precinct 27. What is that? Uh, hey, well, is that's that yours? my precinct. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Can yeah we do that? I, I, I think I think that's in I think that's definitely in order for sure. I mean, this guy's 85. You think the, the other thing is. He's 85 years old. I met him. He seems like a nice guy. He's not going to walk his precinct. Come, come on. The only reason that they ran him was to make sure that the, that, about that the big bad wolf, Paul Dribbick, wasn't going to take over the organization. Mm-hmm. They wanted me to cut out. See, they didn't even want me to to run for chairman. They they were like, we got to get him out of the equation early. And I'm very skeptical about the elections. We had on this show, we had Ken and Jody Zitko of United Sovereign Americans uh um, organization who cho- who's shown after obtaining the Illinois voter roll that in the 2022 um, election that there was over 600,000 illegal registrations that voted. So there's yeah, definitely so some I, crap going on. I'm sure they could come up elections. with three votes. We, um, so we're done here, right? So one yeah. last thing. We got super, super, super breaking news that we're responsible for. At the end of Chicago, it'll be it, it's going to be breaking oh, on yeah. a war room with Ben Burkwam and Steve Bannon. But you know how they say that the legal aliens commit less crimes than us. So I got all these FOIA reports. I don't want to break it now. It's huge. Wait till you see all these crimes that were committed by illegal aliens. I got the we got the FOIAs right before the show. So a shout out to Ben. Be, hey, hey, Jason. Can you close the show on the snake thing just one more time? Wait, wait, wait. We're gonna we got two events that we we want to just pump up real quick. We got the uh, grand opening of the Southside Republican uh, uh, office uh, from SouthsideGOP.org. Who helped drive that this weekend? That was yeah with Devin uh, Devin Jones. Jones. Devin Jones, the first African American led Republican office on the South Side of Chicago. That is happening this weekend. Uh, March 23rd, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. They're going to be doing all kinds of fun stuff. And uh, it's definitely showing a turning of the tide in Chicago, right, Terry? Yep. And- I helped I helped do that, you guys. What have you done in Downers Grove right. with minorities? All right, what's the next one? And uh, this Oh, is- it's me up there, Greg. Uh, what, is, what is this one? You, This is you. It's Grassroots Rising. Rising. When's this one? <laughs> yeah. When is this? It's uh, Saturday, April 27th. Oh, Nancy Hayes. I love her. Um, so hope we'll, we'll, we'll play this again. I just, I'm going to be out there. Uh, we'll promise I won't talk about Bolts and Medrics and Novak, but um, yeah, if you guys have, you know, it's a great organization, right? Um, so please try to, try to uh, show. We'll, we'll I, I don't know what the hell I'm going to oh, talk about. Oh, this is an that. IFA. Yeah. Event. Okay. It's I, yeah, yeah, so so. Then, oh yeah, convention of states. Yeah, and then we got a convention. Convention of states is holding a town hall meeting at the uh, Woodridge Public Library Sunday, April seventh. They're a good organization. They're trying to uh, get a convention of the states. I think they need like thirty some states so that they can put a uh, constitutional amendment in. And they're looking for stuff like term limits, and that'd be a good idea. And. Uh, so yeah, go visit them and uh, learn more about how and, uh, the grassroots can fight back. Yeah. So can you close out on my favorite my favorite TikTok video, <laughs> the, the bolts one? <laughs> We're gonna close out on it. You guys gotta watch it because I think it went double last thing. time. I love this thing. <laughs> oh my god, it's like perfect for this guy. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, he's an evil dude. Yeah. I'm a snag. I'm a snag. I'm a snag. I'm a snag. I'm a slither and snake it because I'm a snag. Thank you, guys. Stay tuned. We got some cool stuff coming up. Sorry. Yeah, like, uh, subscribe, and all that stuff. Like, subscribe, oh, share. Oh, we're going to have Mega Hulk on hey, here uh, soon. Hey, keep, keep sending us your comments, your questions. Yeah. That's That helps. Thank you. Bye. Love you.